What's up everybody, Nate here from Out of the Basement bringing you a brand new action figure review. Today from McFarland Toys, we're looking at the DC Multiverse White Knight Batman. Big ol' thank you to Amazon for actually shipping some action figures on time, even a little early. Wish they'd keep that same energy with the Black Series, but hey, here we are. We've got the newest Batman from McFarland in hand. And at first I wasn't really sure about this figure. I'm unfamiliar with the comic book. I do have the comic book, but I have not had a chance to sit down and read it yet. But as the days went on and I started looking at pictures and seeing more promo pictures, I started to dig the look of this Batman, so I had to pick him up. And I also got the Azrael figure from this wave. Skipped Joker, but expect a review for Azrael soon. So let's take a look at the package. It is the DC Multiverse package. We are now very familiar with 12 plus DC Multiverse logo on the front here. You can see it says Batman on the side, McFarlane Toys down at the bottom. There is a picture from the comic book along with some other figures from McFarlane. These aren't the figures in the wave, but you know, you got Hell Knight or you got Hellbat and the Wonder Womans and the Arkham figures. So it's, it's, it's curious that they don't show the Azrael and the Joker on the back, but you know, whatever. And of course you got the source here. It's White Knight number one, Comics 2017. And of course on the side here, it says Batman White Knight. On the bottom, not a whole lot going on. On the top, of course, nothing much going on. So let's go ahead and free this guy from his plastic prison. We'll take a look at his accessories and then the figure itself. Okay, so first up, we have Batman's grappling hook, which is pretty damn awesome. Looks like the old, the uh, animated series grappling hook. It's got some nice silver paint on the side. And of course, it fits in his hand just like that very well. We also have a rolled up bat rope here, which is a nice little accessory piece. You can see like the battering type deal rolled up and tied onto the rope and it just is sort of dangling there. And he also has storage for it so you can put it on his belt just like that. And if you want to, you could also put the grappling hook on his belt. So you got options there with how you would like to display this figure and what you would like to store on his waist here. So that's actually pretty dang cool. And then we have the same rope unraveled and it um, is sort of pre-posed right here. You can see that it is like it is firing out of something or being thrown. Although unfortunately you can't take this piece out and connect it. I thought you were gonna be able to connect it or something like that, but you can't. So it's kind of random that you'd have what I would assume is the grappling hook, or maybe he uses a rope because it's connected to his belt. I'm not sure. I'm not familiar with the comic book, but um, it's it's definitely strange. And, you know, I guess you could get him to hold it, but with how flaccid it is, it's going to, it's just going to look a little weird. So overall, I'm not really sure what else he could come with, but these accessories are pretty cool. And I like that he has some neat weapon storage. I think that's a nice little touch there. So let's take a look at the figure. All right. And here is Batman from Batman, the white knight out of the packaging. And he just absolutely looks fantastic. I flipped through the comic book, but like I said, I haven't read it. So um, based on what I've seen, the artwork in the comic book, this guy looks pretty damn accurate. And I like the costume design a lot. It's, uh, it's pretty unique for Batman. I like the collar. I like the really wide bat insignia, the big belt, the giant boots. It's just something a little bit different. And I was unaware of this comic book until the actual figures were shown off. And then I was kind of like, huh. You know, I like I like this design. I like Azrael's design, although I think Azrael is technically from a different White Knight comic book. So let's go ahead. We're going to take him off the stand and get a closer look. And as you can see right off the bat, what I love most about this figure is that head sculpt, the giant chin, the frowning face, the furrowed brow. He looks pissed off. And I'm not 100% sure what the comic book is about, but I think he's maybe Batman's the villain, something like that. I'm not 100% sure. The collar is awesome though. I love the the popped collar. It just looks so awesome. Kind of has like a 
like a Gotham by Gaslight sort of styling for Batman. And I love the insignia here. It's got these really nice lines on it. And it's also, of course, sculpted onto the actual figure that is not paint, ladies and gentlemen. So again, McFarlane killing it with the Batman figures, killing it with a lot of their newer figures with this amazing sculpt work here and all of his muscles and everything. He just looks jacked. He's absolutely ripped. He's big and bulky. And he's got a nice big ass belt here as well which is painted yellow and the paint apps are very nice. He also has a knife sculpted right there. It's not removable, but it is there. And that's something that's very cool. And of course it continues on to the back of the figure. The cape, my cape is actually a little messed up right here. It wants to just hang like that, which isn't a huge deal, but it's not really a stylized sculpt. It's a, it's got a little bit of a blowing in the wind look, but for the most part, it's just kind of laying flat down. And then moving on to his arms, you can see he still has his iconic little bat claw things. And he's got two little black sculpted marks there. I'm not sure what that's all about. He actually has a fisted hand, which is great. I'm, if there's one thing I should say that, you know, McFarlane should start including, it's give us some fisted hands with Batman. He punches people a lot. And it's, it's kind of goofy when all we have are open gripping hands for the figure. No alternate hands, of course, but at least you get one you get one fist and you get one hand for the grappling hook. The legs, again, they're like this really weird stylized boot. It's almost all the way up his leg. Pretty unique. I like the way it looks. It's just more uh, black plastic. It's not painted as far as I can tell. There's not a whole lot of paint on this guy. And just like I said with the Arkham figure, I think we could use just a little... Just a little black wash on the figure just to give it a little bit more this one definitely doesn't look as plasticky as the uh, arkham asylum figure in my opinion but still i think just throw that little bit of black wash on there and this figure would look at least two times better and then moving down he's also got some unique boot designs here he's got sort of like the uh you know the things on his arms but now they're down on his boots. So yeah, I really like the design of this figure. It's a, it's a unique sculpt for Batman. And I think the sculpting and everything, the paint application details are pretty clean and he looks awesome in my opinion. So now let's go ahead and we'll take a look at his articulation. Okay, Batman can look up a pretty decent amount there. Really nice range of motion for looking up, which is always important for Batman. He can look down just a little bit, not too much. It kind of is just like a looking forward face, but still pretty awesome. And of course you can get some tilt out of that side to side there. And he can look over, not all the way, cause of course the collar gets in the way, but you still have a pretty nice range of motion there. The collar's nice and soft, so it doesn't impede it too bad. But yeah, for a Batman from McFarlane, this is some pretty good head range of course the shoulders can go all the way out the cape is nice and soft despite it looking very nice especially when it's draped over the shoulders like this he's got the butterfly joints although batman's chest sculpt is so big and bulky they don't really do a whole lot for the figure they're definitely there but you know best motion you're going to get is actually going backwards with the butterfly joint as opposed to going forwards with it but still appreciated butterfly joints always appreciated here on out of the basement we got bicep swivel as well which functions we've got a single jointed elbow that is not very pretty once you actually crank it up but you do get 90 degrees out of it but when it's actually all the way down it's really nice and the sculpt is pretty clean there it's not very broken at all of course you can see the pins and such but it's actually a pretty clean joint when it's not uh, flexed but of course if you're gonna have them posed in some action poses you're gonna see this ugly sort of ratchet system of course we got the McFarland wrists so they swivel around they go down they go up you can pivot the joint if you want and it's pretty hard to do with this guy because they're tucked in but you can also get it to go side to side. The joints move in all directions. You guys know the deal. 
it's McFarlane. They have these funky joints, but I think they're getting a little bit better at hiding them. For the ab crunch here, we can see he goes down about that far. He goes back a decent amount there. And of course you get the twist at the top of the chest and then you also get the twist at the waist. There's plenty of movement to be had out of this guy as you can see right here. You got some pretty good range of motion and the crotch piece is the soft plastic like we saw on that first initial Batman. So you can have independent articulation if you'd like. You know, get him into something, some sort of action -y pose like that. And he's gonna look awesome. Of course, with that crotch piece being soft, you get really nice leg articulation, goes all the way up. No, actually, yeah, there you go. There's a little bit of thigh swivel there as well on both legs. So that is nice that that's being implemented. Double jointed knees that get the job done. Although on this figure, they actually kind of look very strange. Some really curious sculpting there, especially at the top of the knee. The feet can move down pretty far. They can go up a decent amount as well. You do have some okay ankle pivot. You know, it kind of just looks like his ankles are broken. And of course you got that sweet, sweet toe hinge that really doesn't help out a whole lot. Overall at this point, the articulation is pretty standard fare for what we've seen from McFarlane. I don't hate the single jointed elbows, especially when it's on a bulky character like this version of Batman. So I like the articulation. Of course, it's a little bit limited, but you know, I think the sculpting and just the overall design of the costume more than makes up for that. So with that being said, let's go ahead and compare him to some other McFarlane Batman figures and some other Batman figures in general, along with some more random stuff. First up, we've got my previous McFarlane reviews, which is the Arkham Asylum Batman and Joker. We have the sorta Walmart exclusive blue Action Comics 1000 Batman and the NECA SDCC Armored Batman. Then we have the NECA Superman from San Diego Comic-Con and the McFarlane Superman. And finally, for some shits and giggles, we've got the SH Figure Arts Tank Trooper and the Mafex First Order Storm Trooper. So overall, I really dig this Batman figure. It's a unique design. It's got some pretty nice articulation. Of course, I think the accessories could be a little bit better. I think maybe we could have gotten a Batarang or something with this figure. Although I'm not really sure what he uses in the comic book. Maybe that knife could have been removable in the sheath. I'm not too sure, but I'm also not too upset by it because I just really like the design of this Batman figure and looking at the comic book and everything. I think they absolutely nailed the look in action figure form. And I like that McFarlane is going a little bit out of the box and giving us some different, more modern iterations of Batman instead of just the same old, same old. Of course, it wouldn't be an out of the basement video without the action figure falling off of my crappy little stand from Amazon. But yeah, that is my review of this Batman figure. I think it's a cool design. If you're interested in this look for Batman, definitely pick it up. Uh, it's hitting stores now. I think I got pretty lucky with my pre-order from Amazon, but uh, expect a mass release sometime early July as far as my understanding goes. So if you enjoyed my review, don't forget to leave a like. Subscribe if you're new. We mostly talk about Star Wars The Black Series on the channel, but every once in a while, old Nady old boy throws in a McFarlane figure or two because I am just digging what they're doing with DC. Thanks so much for watching. Of course, I'm Nate from Out of the Basement, and I'll see you guys next time.